All right, good afternoon then everyone as we are at the end of another week of trading on Friday the uh, 24th of May. Let's have a flick across the calendar and see what has gone on over the course of this week. Relatively quiet on the news front. We did have a couple of things though. Um, RBA start well, not on Monday but starting on Tuesday the RBA the minutes kind of just confirmed what what really the majority of the central banks are are, are, are saying. Nothing, nothing too much really of no I mean data monitor global trends and all that sort of jazz so nothing there for us to uh, go off inflation in line with expectations from Canada again not really anything to see there from uh, from Canada in terms of a step further or closer uh, closer to to cuts at the next meeting or they're the one then after that so there was a 62 percent chance of of a cut at the next meeting it's uh, sort of 50 50 whether you whether you get one or not is um is a different question so let's see how that pans out over the next over the next while but we can't really make any sort of decision off the back of that inflation though in the uk is slightly different story i mean i was kind of thinking earlier on the week go for three three point two to two point one i didn't think it'd go down that much we kind of looked at a bit of a higher than anticipated inflation print from the uk yesterday it doesn't change much i think in terms of their thinking inflation back at 2.3 percent is exactly what they want and is a step in the right direction albeit not as big as a step of a step as they uh as as the market was uh market was thinking but you know, probably an August rate cut from, from the Bank of England seems the most likely. A general election was called in the UK from Rishi Sunak, 4th of July, the date for that. So maybe the Bank of England going to uh, give cuts a miss till they, till they get through that. They have said that they're not going to talk, they're not going to speak, they're not going to comment on anything until that election is true. So, I mean, the government and the central bank are supposed to work somewhat independently from each other, but I think they're just going to, leave the government to it and they will sort um they will sort the interest rates out after that is finished really by the sounds of things um minutes from us was a was a bit of an interesting one you didn't get as much of a reaction off as you as you may have thought but one of the one of the things to note from those minutes on wednesday from the us was talk of some of the members in the fed considering the prospect of interest rate hikes. That's not really something that we've heard too 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 much out of the Fed. So I'm kind of saying on Wednesday that there is potential for some hikes if inflation continues to uh, continues to be sticky. Obviously inflation back at what was it, 3.6 percent, I think it was. I'm not managing to get it under control the way that they uh, probably probably thought they would when they started the hike interest rates. Um, I had some PMIs yesterday out of the US, which came in pretty pretty aggressively higher, which kind of contributed to a bit of downside in stocks, but maybe a bit of a buy the room or sell the fact thing as well in yesterday's session. Stocks getting whacked, but NVIDIA, NVIDIA's earnings Wednesday evening after the close was relatively positive. Beat estimates, also the 10 to 1 stock split, which probably encourages some retail investors to go and, to go and invest, into the, uh, invest into the company. So... I mean, it kind of feels a little bit the U.S. economy is you know, balancing on whether Nvidia is successful or not. But, anyways, um, what can you do? Uh, what can you do with that? Um, that's, is it really right? Is it not? I don't think so. But again, that's just that's just the way that it is at this point in time, unfortunately. But um, apart from that, you're after PMIs out of Europe, which were largely positive, most of them up, up above 50, German manufacturing PMI below 50, but did beat uh, the consensus quite aggressively. So relatively positive economic data from the, uh, from the Germans and then from the Europeans in yesterday's, in yesterday's session. Um, UK, Really positive out the UK yesterday in terms of the uh, in terms of the manufacturing, not quite so much in terms of the services and also in terms of the composite. But then you come to the retail sales today, and you're starting to strengthen off the back of retail sales today. When they come in minus two point three percent, then minus two, and then minus two point seven. So I'm not even going to try and make sense of that, to be perfectly honest with you. So I'm going to move on, move on past that. But maybe the more interesting thing of this week is the or B and Z. Or B and Z, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand put a lot of thought to interest to an interest rate hike at this meeting on Wednesday. Now that is important because it will probably imply some New Zealand dollar strength coming forward. All right? Upgraded forecast for the terminal rate that being the interest rate, and then said they're not going to cut or are not looking at cutting at some point. Um, 
not looking at cutting until some point in kind of mid mid 2025 so nice probably some strength for the New Zealand dollar, you would have to imagine. And, you know, a pretty choppy week across FX. You see in the Aussie down, you see the euro grind lower. Sterling's kind of gone lower since Wednesday. Uh, dollar Swiss kind of was up on Tuesday, but has really, oh, Wednesday, should I say, sorry, and kind of has chopped sideways. Dollar cat upside. So, you know, pretty positive for the US dollar over the course of this week. It's higher against most things. Uh, this euro has kind of turned around a bit and started to push higher pretty aggressively today. I'm not sh- too sure why, to be perfectly honest. You positive, positive durable goods orders out of the US, which haven't managed to really give some any strength to the uh, any strength to the US dollar. The Kiwi dollar though hanging up here at the highs and the Kiwi dollar has held firm when everything else has weakened against the US dollar. So shows a bit of underlying strength in the Kiwi dollar. I think it's something we've got to watch heading into uh, heading into next week um stock down so you can see the s p the nasdaq the russell all having the downside yesterday the dow jones got whacked yesterday and it does look like a bit of a maybe a bit of a turning point a bit of a correction but ultimately if you zoom out onto a daily or a weekly chart picture hasn't really changed is it so you know until this daily chart starts to deteriorate more aggressively i think you know, i'm still looking at look at being a buyer really to be honest with you any dip on stocks I mean, even if it's right, even if it's wrong, I mean, if you go through a trading career, buying every dip in stocks, you will, um, you'll do all right by the end of it. So that's just something to keep keep an eye on. Bond yields rallying pretty aggressively over the last week or 10 days, which is just an interesting one. It's causing gold to sell off quite aggressively as well. Um, yeah, FX relatively choppy, but stocks have had a bit of volatility this week. You know, bonds have had a bit of volatility. Oil has continued its trend to the downside. Gold having a bit of, bit of aggressive downside. So not a great week for FX traders. But if you're trading this sort of stuff, then maybe it's been all maybe it's been all right. But it's ten-year yield trending higher. There's two-year yield trending higher what that means then going forward it's probably i mean it should in theory be likely it should in theory be positive for the for the us dollar should in theory be negative for stocks but as we know in trading theory doesn't work out all the time so um yeah i mean let's see this week next week does that continue to go if that does continue to go you have to imagine buying dollars decent bet into next week if this does continue higher but next week we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it um a long weekend in the UK over this weekend, bank holiday on Monday. So uh, we won't be active on Monday. We'll be back to normal on Tuesday for us. But enjoy a long weekend. Do recharge the batteries. Get some rest in. We'll be back next week for another week of trade. Enjoy the weekend. I'll speak to you all.